I am so glad you're here for another episode of Mechanism Monday, where every Monday we draw out the electron pushing arrows for the mechanisms for different chemical transformations. In last week's video, I asked if you could figure out the mechanism for this chemical transformation. So if you haven't had a chance, pause the video now and try it independently. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'll give you another mechanism to solve for next week's video. This reaction is what is known as the iodoform test. The iodoform test is unique because it's used to determine whether or not compounds contain carbonyl groups. It's a specific type of haloform reaction, and as you'll see here, we'll talk about how this helps you identify whether or not there are carbonyl compounds or carbonyl functional groups present in your molecule. Importantly, the first step in this reaction is actually to generate an enolate species. So the first step is deprotonation of what's known as an alpha carbon hydrogen. You've probably seen this type of reaction in an organic chemistry class, but if you haven't, I have a video here about forming enols and enolates that you can check out. So the first step is going to be deprotonation of one of these acidic alpha carbon hydrogens. The electrons will come down making a new carbon-carbon double bond and kicking up the pi electrons to oxygen. And this is how you form what's known as an enolate species. An enolate contains an alkene and a negatively charged oxygen that is attached to that alkene carbon. From here, remember, we have iodine, which is I2, which looks like this. And this enolate species has three lone pairs of electrons on the oxygen, which can, can come back down to reform this carbon to oxygen double bond. And when this happens, this will allow this carbon to act as a nucleophile for one of these iodines, which will kick over the rest of these electrons between the two iodine atoms and form an iodide. So the product of this transformation allows us to form an acyl iodide. So now we have still two hydrogens at this alpha carbon position, and also now this acyl iodide. And from here, this same reaction where we form the enolate species by deprotonation of an alpha carbon hydrogen, followed by nucleophilic attack of this enolate species to iodine to form a brand new carbon to iodine bond at that position. And this will occur two more times in the exact same sequence. So the product of that following those subsequent transformations is that now you have this carbonyl group as well as a carbon which now has three different iodine species attached to it. Now importantly, now that we form this triiodomethyl group, this is going to be a great leaving group. In fact, remember we still have hydroxide present in our solution, so what can happen is another hydroxide can come in and do nucleophilic acyl substitution here, which we've seen a few times previously in different Mechanism Monday reactions. So the electrons will come up from following nucleophilic attack at this carbonyl position, the electrons will come up, kick up the electrons to the oxygen, and then subsequently they will come back down, and that is what will kick off this triiodo methyl group. And the product of this reaction, importantly, we're producing Ci3, which is going to be negatively charged with a lone pair of electrons on carbon, and we're also forming a carboxylic acid. So the carboxylic acid was formed via nucleophilic acyl substitution where we've attacked this carbonyl compound with this hydroxide. Now importantly, keep in mind that now we have this negatively charged species and we have an acidic proton here, and this negatively charged nucleophile will come and deprotonate that species in order to to generate what is importantly our final species which is this carboxylate species. Additionally in doing so we're forming CHI3 and importantly this iodoform reaction is an iodoform test because this will allow us to form what is a yellow solid precipitate in this reaction and this yellow solid precipitate can be easy to visualize and this formation of this compound allows us to discern whether or not some material had a carbonyl group in it initially because this sequence of transformations will form this yellow solid precipitate, giving an experimentalist a clear indication that the only formation of this reaction could be possible through subsequent reactions with different carbonyl groups. If you enjoyed this week's mechanism, give it a thumbs up. For next week's video, I'd love to see if you could figure out the mechanism for this chemical transformation. If you have any ideas, drop it as a comment down below. And make sure you're subscribed to the channel so that you never miss another Mechanism Monday. I'll see you next week.